नेक्स्ट टेक्निक इज परो इरिगेशन You can see the image of the furrow irrigation. Here, we are excavating the furrows. Furrows means a narrow ditches through which the water is allowed to supply or water is allowed to discharge. So, through the main ditch, we are going to supply this water through the subsidiary water courses, and again. Through the subsidiary water courses, we are allowing this water to enter into a various furrows or various narrow ditches, so that the level of the water is maintained properly and slowly. Ah, uh, slowly the water plant roots can give can extract the water sufficiently, extract the water for their nourishment. So let's start with the discussion. See in this method, only one half to one fifth of the surface is wetted, and hence the evaporation losses are very much reduced, as well as it uh, results in a less pudding of a soil and permits a cultivation properly. So, uh, what the what a, what is exactly furrows? A furrows are a narrow filled ditches excavated between the Rows of the plant and carry irrigation water through them. Generally, the length of uh, this furrow uh, may be varies from three meter for the garden crop to five hundred meter for field crops, and the common length uh, being hundred to two hundred meter only. See. If the furrows are of a excessive length, then what happens? Deep percolation losses and soil erosion will occur at the upper end of the field, and the general uh, it cannot wet the soil properly. It generally wets the soil at the head of the channel or head of the field only, and the end part of the field will remain dry. So the general slope. Provided for the furrows may vary from 0.2 to 6 percentage, and this method is generally used for the row crop like maize, jowar, sugar cane, cotton, tobacco, ground nut, potatoes, etc. So, furrow spacing for corn, potatoes, sugar cane, and other row crops. is determined by the proper spacing of plant rows one irrigation furrow being provided for each row in such a circumstances the spacing of furrows is kept from 1 to 2 meter in orchard irrigation if the spacing is kept more it is essential to check the distribution of moisture after each watering by auger boring see for the soil of a low permeability the depth of furrows may vary from 20 to 30 cm and the depth for uh, it should be uh, in between the 8 to 30 cm also but the soil having the low permeability it should be very from the 20 to 30 cm so it is essential in irrigating the root crop such as the sugar cane crop to have furrows deep enough and the stream in each small enough so that water cannot come in contact with the plant the common size of furrow for row crop such as cotton tobacco and potatoes is about 25 cm wide and 8 To ten centimeter deep. So generally, we are taking the depth. We are generally con considering the depth of furrows uh, is eight to thirty centimeter. So this is the furrow irrigation. It reduces the percolation. It uh, it reduces the evaporation losses. It reduces the soil erosion problems.
so this is one of the best method or best technique of a irrigation next technique is a sprinkler irrigation so it is also called as a farm water application generally uh, if uh, you visit to the garden so you can see there is a sprinkler is seated in the garden so continuous water supply is going on uh, the sprinkler has a two arm or four arm so through this arm the water application is continuously going on so through this the applied uh, it is applied water in the form of a spray like a artificial drain in this system the cost of a land preparation and permanent water delivery system of channel of or conduit is less so here no need to level or need, no need to cultivation uh, no need to do any leveling of a ground no need to do the any uh, ditches uh, furrows etc so we can simply uh, construct the and we can simply adopt this sprinkler in our field and we can easily supply the water uh, artificially water to the particular field or farm the sprinkler system can be classified under the three heads permanent system semi permanent system and portable system this method is more useful where there are some condition and there are some uh, favorable reason where we can adapt this sprinkler irrigation where the land is irregular there only we can use not there only but we can use then the land is irregular irregular we can use the sprinkler irrigation surface irrigation is not adopted obviously the land is irregular leveling is not properly done then the surface irrigation is not adopted so in this situation in this condition we can adopt the sprinkler irrigation land gradient is steeper then because if the land gradient is steeper the soil erosion will take place the losses will take place hence we adopt the sprinkler irrigation soil is erodible then soil is highly permeable then water table is high seasonal requirement of water is low in this condition we can adopt the sprinkler irrigation so there are some advantages of the sprinkler irrigation in this by adopting the sprinkler irrigation we eliminate or we reduce the seepage losses land leveling is not required no cultivation is required it covers 16% of crop area it gives 80% of efficiency required of labor is less so ultimately the payment or the the salary that is given to the labor so that will that will be reduced deducted from the overall cost it reaches down the soil hence prevent the salinity like a advantage or like a positive aspect it has a negative aspect it has a bad or ill effects also so wind may distort the sprinkler pattern because the sprinkler uh, is constructed and is introduced at a certain level from the ground level or above the ground level so what happen when the wind velocity is high this wind may distort the sprinkler uh, top portion and the sprinkler arm um, sprinkling all the patterns a constant water supply is needed for commercial use of equipment see the sprinkler is constantly and continuously moving so it requires a constant and high flow water supply then and then only the sprinkler can supply the water properly water must be clean and free from the sand if it is contaminated water is contaminated the particle the silt particle may clog the sprinkler nozzle uh, nozzle or sprinkler outlet so the water will get clogged and the sprinkler cannot be 
uh, move properly and sprinkler cannot be discharge the water properly the power requirement is high obviously the heavy soil with poor intake cannot be irrigated efficiently efficiently so these are the like a positive aspects it has a negative aspect also so in uh, we uh, if you remember uh, we had discussed in a national water policy so uh, in the national water policy they had mentioned that or the features that had mentioned in the national water policy that ki we can adopt a sprinkler irrigation and the uh, drip irrigation to save the water or to utilize the economic uh, to utilize the uh, best or to utilize the proper amount of a water so that we can uh, control the uh, we can reduce the water losses properly 